An average person worldwide spends almost 7 hours in front of a screen, whether it's a mobile phone or a PC screen. The leading countries, like South Africa and Philippines, there the people spend almost 11 hours in front of a screen. And young people spend more time than old people, so we expect in the future these numbers to rise further. People mainly use this time in front of the internet, and currently we are at the start of a shift to something called the metaverse, we have discussed it in the past video, where it will be more a virtual world, while we will have a physical presence in that digital world. And in this video, I want to have a talk about the future. How will the future of humanity will be? How will our lives in that digital world look like? What kind of opportunities this future bring? But also, what kind of dangers are waiting for us? It's estimated that humanity is already 2 million years old. And for most of this time, until very recently, there was only nature for us. We lived in nature, we were part of nature. The only way to actually a bit, you know, escape from that nature would be in our own imagination, so art and so on. Then it came, we could, we could argue that TV is the start of a, you know, that we, you know, create some digital world, or something more like analog digital hybrid. But it was a passive experience. We would look at the TV and that's it. We couldn't really interact. And for a couple of decades we had this phase, this passive digital world phase. But then with the, with the internet, also with the computer games, we could argue, a more interactive phase. I call this the digital interactive phase. So there is a digital world, we look through a screen, but we interact with that digital world. This is the world we are living today. And we do a lot of things digitally, but in the next steps, which I call the digital present phase, we are slowly moving inside the digital world. So not looking outside from a screen, but we are moving in. So it will be around us. The uh, avatar of us will be really participating in the digital world. And this opens new possibilities. Not only the experience is much more interesting, but we can do more. Think like socialization was not really the same experience, like with friends, but you can do more now. You can watch a movie together, you can even go to a concert, digitally go to a concert together. You can do more together, thanks to this digital presence. Same thing uh, with work, like meeting. You can make really digital meeting where you inter interact with each other, which was not possible with just using Zoom or such video conferencing techniques. Similarly, art. I mean, you could even today do, you know, a bit some art, but now you can really paint with your hand and so on, or pottery again with your hand. You can digitally also save them, so art is expected to go digital as well. So with these new possibilities, sports, I forgot, we didn't do too much digital sport before, it was difficult or not even possible. But now with this, you know, new virtual reality headset, you can do real sport, real sweating, that's what I call sport. So basically things that we were not doing before with this interactive phase, in the new digital presence phase of humanity, we will do much more. More of the uh, physical, natural world stuff we will be doing in the digital world. And we can expect this trend to continue, because in the next phase, which I call the digital reality phase, this will be the phase where there will be hardly any difference between the real, what we call the real world, the natural world, and the digital world. So to go to that, before we go there, let's talk about the enabling technologies, because this sounds maybe like a dream to you, or maybe it's for some even magic. But in reality, humanity has already made quite a lot of progress in this area. The main topic here is what we call the brain and the brain-computer interface. So there's an interface between our brain and the computers. We already have this at a very primitive level. For instance, we have um, artificial limbs, like arms, which can already control with your brain, because they're quite complicated things and this kind of connection really helps it to make it natural. Or you can already, quite a couple of years ago, you can send an email with your thoughts, they have put some electrodes, you think about a sentence, and that sentence is then transformed into an email, really email and sent. And 
I mean, these kind of things are computer games also, another application. Again, they use some electrode kind of things they put on your, close to your brain. And then you can really think, go left, go right. This really is already there. So it is not just some theoretical possibility. We already have these interfaces. Even Elon Musk's company is working on that. The discussion is more how to do it nice, right? Because to be effective, it should be really maybe close to the brain, but you don't want surgery. You don't, not everyone wants to become a cyborg, right? So this is the discussion now. How do we, you know, connect the brain to the computers in a most effective and most human way? But it is coming. And what? Once that happens, the difference between the real world and uh, the digital world will hardly be there. Because, I mean, in that, um, what is the real world anyway? Okay, it's out there, we know it. But what we really see or feel only comes from our brain. So the world, I mean, think about all animals. They see the world different than us. We see it, you know, in these colors, some color animals see less colors, and so on. I mean, the world is not fixed. It is what our brain tells us. So it's all about the brain. We have sensors, you could call it sensor in our hand, and the brain then decides what to do with it. So basically, the digital world will then fake these signals. So we, we touch something, right? I touch. And then the, the computer will then simulate that touch. And then we will physically feel, because the brain will tell that, Oh, some, I touched something. And, you know, we can recreate that. It will be basically exactly like touching a real object. We, the brain, because everything comes from the brain, we will never see a difference. And, I mean, touch is one thing, but you will, you know, the feeling, the smell, the taste, everything comes from the brain. I mean, we might think that the mouse does the taste, but it doesn't. It just gives some stimulus, and then the brain decides what it is. That's why it is, of course, will be possible to digitally create a taste, digital touch, digital smell, digital basically everything. So this is already is happening. We still have many decades until this is really working seamlessly. So first we will go through this virtual reality headset, you know, feel a bit, you know, our movements will be tracked rather primitive, but we will feel really in the digital world. But so at one point, but the younger among us might even see those days, they will really start feeling the digital world. And at one point, there will be absolutely no difference. So, in a sense that once you are in the digital world or in the real world, your body will not be able to feel that difference. Because as I said, it all comes from the brain. And latest by then, there will be even much bigger shifts. Because we already discussed. More and more things are moving to the digital world. Some of our social interactions, work, and so on, even art, we said. Once, though, this brain computer interface works properly, people, I mean, social interaction, you know, the touch of your friend, you will really feel it. The touch of your lover, lover, you will really feel it. A food, imagine a food, you digitally consume a food, and you will really get that taste. You will really feel as if you eat something. Even, you know, you will have some water in your mouth. That kind of realism level is coming. And that means that more and more these activities that eating to survival you still need. Huh? You will need to somehow get some package of nutrition so that you don't die. But eating for pleasure might be, become a completely digital thing. All our interaction with friends, partners, sex, all these things can be then digitally created and will also be digitally consumed. Homes, I mean, even in digital current stage, with virtual reality, you can be live, look like a nice home. But without this physical feeling, it will never be the same. But in this new future, you will really feel the home, smell it. Or, um, yeah, so basically, you can live in a castle and you really have the feel of a castle or travel. You can travel to the beach and you will feel the sand, you will, see the, you will feel the warmth of the sun. This is the future that is being built. That means that, as I said, more and more things will move to this new digital world.